Welcome to Project Management for Professionals. Hello, my name is Ashley Hunt, and I will be your instructor for these videos on project management. Just to give you a little bit about my background so you know what you're getting yourself into, I am PMP certified. That means I've taken the Project Management for Professionals exam. I'm also an instructor of project management, and I've been teaching it for almost eight years now. So just so you know a little bit about me, I'd like to congratulate you on taking this course that will prepare you to work on your next project a little bit more efficiently and effectively. And if you decide to get PMP certified, this course will help you do that as well. Welcome to this PMP training video for lesson one. In this lesson, we'll be discussing who the Project Management Institute is and what is the PMBOK, or Project Management Body of Knowledge. We'll also be going over a little bit of terminology just to get you ready for the rest of the course, which does include quite a bit of terms that PMI uses to describe things. So who is the Project Management Institute, or PMI? They're an international not-for-profit educational association, and they are definitely exclusively dedicated to expanding project management practices and standards throughout the entire project management field. We will be discussing all of those best practices in this course. PMI has set the standards for project management as well as the certification exams that are so popular now. They've gathered best practices from years of project management tools and techniques. Notice the word says gathered. They didn't make this stuff up. They went around and found out which processes, which tools and techniques work the best across the entire project management life cycle. If you are interested in certification or learning more about PMI, please look them up on their website at www.pmi.org. So what is this PMBOK, or Project Management Body of Knowledge? Currently, the PMBOK is in its fourth edition, and basically it's an outline or an overview which defines generally accepted best practices. We will be learning all of the information that you would find in the PMBOK. However, there are some things that aren't found in it. It doesn't explain a whole lot. It is an outline. It definitely does represent about 40 to 60 percent of the exam content. It just depends on the test pool that you get. The new exam is based on the fourth edition PMBOK as well. So we are learning the guide and the processes and the tools and techniques that are found in the PMBOK. However, there are some things that are not found in the PMBOK that are on the exam and in this course. Things like conflict resolution, motivational theories, professional and social responsibilities, and problem-solving techniques. So we'll be discussing these things in this course, and if you decide to take the exam, you'll see them there as well. So why learn new tools and techniques, according to PMI? Well, the reason being is because on average, most projects fall behind schedule, they're over budget, they're canceled before they're finished, there's conflict. Only 54% of projects finish on schedule. On average, they end up being 222% longer than the actual plan. 52.7% of projects will cost 189% more than your original estimates. Ever had a project that was canceled right in the middle? Sometimes we're not even aware, right? People are walking around saying, are we still working on this project? Or because of all of these things, conflict on the project is big and it's hard to deal with. Or we're not really able to track the performance or status of our project as we're going. A lot of these challenges to projects today, we're going to be discussing how to overcome. That's what this course is all about, to make sure that schedules, budgets, conflicts, quality, risk, all of these things are addressed on your next or current projects. There are many reasons and many problems on projects and many reasons why projects fail. Uh, this is just a minimal list of some of the reasons why Projects don't exactly go the way as planned. Maybe you are unable to analyze what your stakeholder needs and expectations are. There are too many or unmanageable changes. The goals are poorly defined. You don't have enough resources. You're behind schedule, over budget. You can't track performance. Or there's a lack of ownership. That's not my job. Lack of communication. I honestly believe that communication or lack thereof is one of the biggest issues in project management today. So we're going to discuss communication altogether and how to improve that. 
late deliveries, unrealistic schedules or budgets. Maybe your senior management is not really very supportive. We don't care how you get there, just get there, that kind of thing. Unknown roles and responsibilities from the people working on the project. So these are common problems. One of the biggest problems today is that organizations don't allow their project managers to adequately plan. When we get into planning, you'll find that there are lots of plans that we're going to create to make sure that things go well. In fact, PMI recommends that you spend twice as long planning as you do executing. Now that might seem a little bit unrealistic, but if you think about it, the more you plan, the better the project is going to go and these common problems won't be around. Some of the main reasons that projects don't go off very well or project managers aren't very successful is because of poor communication. I'm not saying that you're bad communicators. What I'm saying is that everybody communicates differently and without an accurate and adequate plan for communication, sometimes things don't get communicated very well. Lack of honesty. I'm not saying you're dishonest. I'm saying when you're gathering estimates from your resources and you ask them maybe how long things should take, they say, oh, it'll take a week. Two weeks goes by and you're asking them what's going on and they say, oh, well, my original estimates were a little bit off. Lack of honesty. Lack of knowledge. Once you get through this course, you should have a very good understanding or a good knowledge base of project management in general and be able to pick and choose some extra tools and techniques to help you out. Lack of authority is a big deal. You don't have the authority to make decisions and you spend a lot of time waiting for sign off or OKs from your clients or your senior management. And then poor planning skills. Not that you're bad planners per se, it's just that you don't always have the time that you need to accurately plan for all the different aspects that a project can bring. PMI has kind of a mission statement and they call it the project management standard purpose. Basically what they recommend is that you follow these generally accepted best practices for project management. You kind of pick and choose. What you'll find as we go through this course is what I like to call perfect world project management, the long, hard, painful way. Most of the time we're using software like MS project and so forth. So you're going to have to decide what works for your individual projects and your individual organizations. So they're just saying these are best practices that it's up to you. The project manager, the organization, the team will decide what is applicable from all of this in any given project. That if you do decide to get certified or join PMI, that you will be asked to follow the code of ethics and professional conduct. We'll discuss that in the very last lesson where we go over what to expect on the exam. The Project Management Body of Knowledge or 4th Edition is a guide. It provides common terminology across the board as well as tools, techniques and processes. It provides everybody on the project team an opportunity to use the same language, the same techniques and the same processes across the board. And in, in anything, it's going to be up to you because each project is going to be unique. But again, the standard purpose is just PMI's mission statement for project management. What is a project? Well, according to PMI, a project is anything that has a temporary sort of thing, a beginning, a middle, and an end. It might not feel like it's temporary or that it's never ending, but it actually does. That it's also unique, that it outputs a unique product, service, result, or deliverable. And that it's progressively elaborated on, meaning you're elaborating on the plans progressively. You're going with what you know. This is their definition of a project, and you'd be surprised what is considered a project. And I know in a lot of organizations that what you're working on is more operational than project management, even though you're given the title of project manager. Those of you that plan on taking the exam, this is an actual exam question. What is a project? Well, it's temporary, it's unique, and it's progressively elaborated. Examples of types of projects are developing a new product or service, making a change in the structure, staffing, or style of your organization, building up a new information system or technology, building a building, or implementing a new business process or procedure. All of these things are temporary, unique, and progressively elaborated.